Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. This time an hour earlier than yes, usually. Usually it's 5 p.m., but yesterday and today I have social engagements, so I chose to do them early. So welcome to my daily broadcast. Today is episode number 465. And the topic today is how well does your dating app know you? Or does your dating app know you that well? Something like that. <laughs> I wrote it and I'm like, what did I say again? I'll get to the point in a moment. Before I do that, let me choose myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to inspire your feminine heart. And the topics can vary quite dramatically. And having done, up until yesterday, 464 broadcasts, there's a lot of content, a lot of content out there. Today's the number 465, episode 465. Um, Facebook Live initially, then it goes to YouTube, and then it goes to all my podcast, and I'll tell you what those links are at the back end of the broadcast. And the topic today, thanks to a conversation with a friend of mine this morning, and I told her afterwards that I'm going to use it in my topic, is, does your dating app know you that well? And I'm saying it that way intentionally, which is kind of obvious. <laughs> because for most people who use dating apps, maybe not you, maybe somebody you know, and it also includes dating sites, to a degree matchmakers too, but mostly dating apps, swiping apps, and dating sites. It seems they seem to know you so well based on the fact you give them a few pieces of key information. You, know, you give them, maybe some of the apps are set up where basically you give them your age, um, your location, and they'll come up with their own um, demographic matching system. So the person they're going to match you with is going to be within 10 years of your age, or within 15 miles where you live, or whatever that is or you put in the criteria you want, and the app has to go ahead and find somebody for you, or some algorithm or something will do that. If you exclude those casual dates, <coughs> excuse me, if you exclude those casual dates that were fun or educational or even challenging, of all of the people you've met or seen or swiped or ticked on, uh, ch um, swiped right on or clicked on, trying to the other app on the methodologies, that you've done have actually worked out to be long-term relationships. For most people, usually it's none, none, maybe one if they're lucky. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, my throat a bit here. The majority of people, I should say the majority of experiences you have, and the majority of people have the same experience, is these dating apps don't work that well. One of those reasons why is because the information you enter into these apps is really minimal. The dating apps you use often ask for simple basic information, like your age, your location, your height, your religious belief, um, cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, maybe it's a couple other things. That's really what they provide. And then they put in there maybe some things about likes and dislikes. And then they provide you with matches based on criteria about what fits the demographics, which is really wonderful, except it needs more than that. If it worked in demographics alone, we would be matched with probably 10, 20,000 people in our neighborhood because we fit, they fit in that profile or fit in that, um, those parameters, parameters of the word, within the parameters. But what you want is more specific than that. What you want is, in fact, a lot more qualitative than quantitative, meaning that the age they're at and their height and their weight and their dietary beliefs and their religious beliefs is the tip of the iceberg if you're really serious about relationship. Because, again, with the criteria you provide, there's going to be 10,000 possibilities out there, locally, most likely within a radius of 50 miles, say, unless you're in a big city like LA or New York. So, what makes somebody match? Because that's not enough. Otherwise, you'd be happily dating but person after person, everyone would be great takes more than that. This is, and, and I'm getting to a bit kind of a pet peeve about this stuff, as you may have known, because I'm not a big fan of dating apps per se, because two things, maybe three, let me see what those two things are. First two ones are pretty straightforward, and I talked about one of these yesterday, or the day before. <laughs> First of all, whichever gender you are, preference you are, it really makes a difference if you know what you're looking for. Before you go tapping on an app, swiping on an app, click on a website, whatever that is. Because first of all, it's 
Let me say this another way. It's like going to... <laughs> it's like never having eaten fruit before, going to the grocery store and trying every single piece of fruit to find one that tastes right. For a start, it's going to be expensive. <laughs> Second, it's going to get messy. And third, you're going to make taste a lot of sour things that don't fit what you want in the process. That's kind of like dating through the dating apps. <laughs> it's expensive, it's going to get messy, and you're going to get a lot of sour ones. I didn't expect the analogy to work that well, but it works. And so it's better off if you know what you're looking for. So do your study, research, planning, visioning, describing yourself before you jump into a relationship. One of the biggest things people forget to do in any area of life, not just in relationship, in every area of life, is they walk into something blindly without any plan. No intention, no desire, no vision board, no affirmation, no, no clear vision of what it is they want to have. And so they wonder why things don't, don't turn out the way they want. Because they never qualified what they want. So to have a clear vision, a clear intention, a clear um, expectation, before you start, tends to stack the deck in your favor. And it's simplistic to say this, but frankly, even if you just start with the basics, like how it feels to be together, like how they treat you, just start with those two things alone. I guarantee you it will change everything in your dating your profiles and what you're looking for, because first of all, you'll rewrite your profile. And secondly, you'll better pick up pretty quickly if somebody in your dating pool is a fit or not really quickly. So that's one. The second piece, which is a bit more subtle and more um, secretive. <laughs> I say it that way. Secretive. Because the paradigm that we're playing in is we think that we can just move forward and get what we want. Oh, if it was that, only if it was that easy. Everybody, everybody, you, me, everybody, nobody's excluded from this, has learnt how a relationship is when they were very young. If you watch my broadcast, this is not news to you. You've heard this from me before, but I'm seeing it play with another way. Because I really feel that there's a, a, there's a there's a hook, there's an angle, there's a piece in this that will actually help you. So, when we're very young, we learn everything from the big people around us. Meaning, not necessarily they teach us. It's not like going to kindergarten or, or junior mid school, middle school or high, or high school or any of that stuff. I'm talking about just living life. And usually before you go to kindergarten, at that young age, when your reasoning powers and your decision making aren't particularly strong, you presume by what happens around you as being the way life is. Because your experience tells you that's the way life is. So when you are experiencing love through a distorted lens, distorted because you look back and see it that way, at the time it happened, it wasn't distorted to you. It was the way it was. Doesn't matter how convoluted, distorted, deranged, challenged, obtuse, incorrect, backwards, whatever it was, the way you experienced love was the right way to experience love according to your young mind, because you didn't have anything to compare against. You don't have a compendium of knowledge when you come in. Well, at least not on this level. Spiritually speaking, it's a of the conversation. But when we come in, we come into this world going, oh, this is interesting, let's play on a spiritual level. And so every interaction, everything you learn about love comes from those different filters, people around you, the way life is. This is a fundamental piece, a fundamental piece of how life works and a fundamental piece about how life doesn't work the way you want it to. I want to show you get this. If you haven't heard it before, please listen. If you heard it before, I hope you get it this time. This is a big piece of the puzzle for life itself. If you have no understanding of what happens to you when you're a child, you'll have no control of what happens to you as an adult. Yeah, that's big words, I know. I'm saying it this way for a reason. The way your life... Has, um, the, way, <laughs> the way your life expresses as an adult is 95, 98% based on what you learn as a child. Simplistic it sounds, I know. But the reality is this. You know, it's been said before about how 
And I'm using relationship as the metaphor, but or, or as the paradigm, but it's true for business, true for money, true for spirituality, true for health, true for physical fitness, all these things on the same umbrella. Your social interactions, your friendships, come from the same place. What you do as an adult is tied to what you were doing as a child, as I mentioned. For most of us, initially in our early dating life, particularly teens and twenties, that early period of time, what tends to be attractive, they say like you, you know, you're not marrying your parents, not literally, but figuratively. When you learn that the programming you have inside created a certain relationship paradigm that you watched around you, again, parents, big people, or adults around you, then when you are an adult, you tend to attract the same thing. So you may date someone to remind you of your father's behavior, or your mother's mood, or your father's language, or your mother's way of treating you. There's a reason for this. It's not wrong or weird, it's normal, unfortunately, because you don't know until later in life that the way you're raised may not have been what you want. Very few people, very few people, are raised in an environment where they were given exactly the right learnings to live life as an adult with no flaws, no challenges, and everything works perfectly. For most of us, we have our own hurdles, our own challenges, our own opportunities. For some, they can bury them enough that it doesn't make a difference and they can just fake it to the make it. But the reality is for most of the people watching my broadcast especially, you know there's more to life than just what seems to just float through. There's a lot more to life than what floats through. And this is the thing for your relationship choices because if you are having the same experience in relationship again and again and again with different people, I can tell you what's causing it. <laughs> You may have guessed by now because I already just talked about it. Is you're running tapes, recordings, sorry, tapes, they're so old school now. We're not even on DVDs anymore, or CDs, but we move beyond that. You're running recordings <laughs> that were basically imprinted when you were four years old, five years old, give or take, that dictate how life expresses and expands and, it, and happens. You are learning, or since you learned when you were younger, based upon the recordings you were imprinted with by the big people, and not even intentionally just the way they interacted with you. And you saw for yourself how a relationship looked and said, I had to copy that. Now you may not have done it up here, but subconsciously, lower down somewhere, that was running automatically. And as I said earlier, 90, 95% of your choices tend to be in that paradigm because your subconscious mind where it all resides is your autopilot. And until you turn the autopilot off, it has control. As a conscious mind, you can't wrest the controls away from that subconscious mind because it's doing its thing the way it was trained to. Nothing wrong, it's just the way it does it. But if it's not what you want, you need to do something different. I'm going to give you a couple of clues. If your adult relationships are reson um, resonating or reminiscent or reminding you of your childhood, not necessarily how you were treated as a child, maybe how your parents interacted, you have to do some work about it. Hi, Gail. So you brought what you're saying here. Also, the subconscious is attracted to the same types of people in the hopes of healing the past. To a degree, I would agree with that. But I would also say that the it's more about to, uh, how can you say this? I'll put it this way. I said at the beginning how we are, we are wired at a young age about how love is expressed. So we, as an adult, are looking for that love but the love is encased in that particular paradigm, behavior, dysfunction. So it's not necessarily about healing the past so much as it's remembering the past because that's the way we think loving is expressed. Because when we were a child, we saw loving that way and we go, that's the way it must be. So for example, if your father abused your mother, you have a wiring when you were younger, you were a young age, if they, if they did it when you were young, that you will look for love that's tied to abuse without any conscious intention. Is subconscious happens automatically and for most people healing that is not even on the radar it's knowing that the love can only come through that filter of abuse which sucks I know for most people go no 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 it's like unfortunately it's the truth more and more times if you talk to therapists you talk or you read all the books about this stuff family dynamics and family histories for almost everybody can talk about this that had an abusive upbringing it tends to receive to um, not reciprocate wrong word it tends to repeat itself as an adult and the challenge is, is that when you're being in an abusive relationship as an adult, when you have kids, they learn it from you. So this pattern goes from generation to generation to generation. This is the 
um, hereditary pattern passed down by behavior, not by genetics, but by behavior. So abuse is a hereditarily passed along pattern. This is big stuff, by the way. I'm, I know I'm throwing big stuff on the table right now. So until you change the wiring, you can, by the way, it will not change. So the only way you're going to change your adult relationship choices, if it's being run like your childhood experiences were, is to go back and rewrite your childhood experiences, to heal them, as mentioned by Gail. This is not simple work, and most, okay, i got to say this, most coaches can't do this. This is a more therapeutic context, actually it's more counseling context, which is what I've been trained in. So it's the idea about going back, and I've done this work myself, and thankfully, and done it with other people and with my clients, and in fact, a client wants me to do that with her next weekend, where we're gonna go back to when she was younger to see what it is that she wired up as a belief structure and undo the wiring. So you can rewrite the history and bring it up to current times so you can change her adult paradigm because as an adult, a mature adult, over 20 years old, over 30 years old, more than that, her relationship choices keep tying back into that childhood pattern. And you may have the same experience. So I'm saying this as a cautionary tale and as a let you know that it's not the end of the world. Because <laughs> it's not the end of the world. You can change your life by doing this work. Jermaine, how can, how can one go about this rewiring? Good question. Um, well, working with me helps, <laughs> but the mechanics of it, just so you know what it's about, it's really what it is, 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 is unpacking and rewiring the programming as chi in childhood, because what's running as an adult is the childhood beliefs that are in the back in the subconscious. They can be accessed, and then basically by going back and seeing what they were for what they were, you can change the wiring. The thing about it is, it's almost like you're reparenting yourself is what it comes back to. And that's one way of terming it. I mean, um, in my, my master's program, they call it healing of memories. And it is the resolution of those memories that are no longer working for you to change them to what you want. And it's also in the NLP languaging as well. Um, what's more of a gestalt, and I have a, I have a blend of skills and I use a lot of gestalt and NLP together. Um, it's more, actually it's NLP. Are called parts integration. And parts integration is basically bringing the disparate pieces that are running around automatic pilot and bringing it back into the fold and having new agreements in place because every, and so this is, this is something that may not make sense to people, but hopefully it will make sense to you. Every part of our consciousness, like subconscious, conscious, all of it, is working together for our, our good. It may not look that way because the wiring's messed up, but the intention behind every single action is for our good. So what happens is it's changing the wiring, keeping the intention right changing the direction of it so that it's working towards your greater good in a way that is in agreement with your adult self. That's probably, that's the shorthand, Cliff Notes way of how we do it. And it's doable, absolutely doable. So, this is one, I wasn't expecting to go here, I was talking about dating apps. <laughs> so I only got deeper on this one. But I want to show you get this point. This is a game changer for a lot of people and they suddenly realize, oh hang on a second, I actually have beliefs that don't match where I want to go. Let me change this belief. Let me change that wiring. Let me go back in and do some um, rewriting of history. Because the thing about this is, your history is all in here. Because history's gone out there. All we got here is the present moment. So your future is in here, and your past is in here. And so you have the ability to change your past in here. Now, whatever your, your parents or older siblings around you who are still alive think, that's irrelevant. It's what's inside of here. When you change the, what's inside of here, your past changes. So it's not immutable, it's changeable. And that's a piece to give you hope in case you're worried. <laughs> so that's a point I want to make sure you get that because that piece will change your life. If you want to find out how to do that, <laughs> I could offer my invitation. I do invite you to reach out to me and have a conversation. I'm not saying I can help you guaranteed, I'm not saying I will work with you guaranteed, but at least reach out for a conversation and find out. If you go to barryselby.com, it's my website, Barry Selby, same as my social media, barryselby.com forward slash chat. I'll put the link in the comments below. You can sign up for a discovery session, my gift to you. Choose a time, fill out the form, and get started. That's one. Secondly, um, it fits. I keep talking about this every day because I'm very really passionate about this piece. A recent practice, I, a recent meditation practice I launched um, called if it's self love med mirror meditation. It's so simple in so many ways, but so profound because if you start with the self loving piece, it's like putting aloe vera on a burn. It soothes your history, it soothes your heart, it soothes that limitation inside. So the self love practice, which is also on my website again, barryselby.com forward slash self love or one word, and check that out. If it lines up for you, get it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's fine. 
This is big stuff I know I'm giving you, and hopefully it makes sense to you. And I do appreciate you asking questions and getting involved. And take this to heart. You can change your history. And then the dating apps, getting back to this at the beginning. Um, on, is it on point you're trying to say, Jermaine? <laughs> I think I was trying to say that. Um, on getting back to the topic in, in the beginning, those dating apps, what you're attracting, because the dating app is basically presenting an opportunity for, for possible meeting somebody. Same as if you do go to a, a, um, a mixer or a, or a speed dating event or a matchmaking service. It doesn't really matter which venue, which format, which, which tool you use. You're attracting the same thing in until you change the wiring. When you change the wiring, what you attract changes. So your dating apps will become more effective for you because you won't have the wiring running automatic pilot inside. So it does work that way. Having said that, I just want to let you know that this is my daily Facebook Live that goes onto YouTube and onto my, my, my podcast. Links, just so you know what they are, is on um, on Facebook, they get saved onto my business page, which is barryselby.author. On YouTube, they end up over there, which is my channel is Barry Selby, and my uh, playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And then if you want to get more on my podcast, you can go to Messages from the Masculine on iTunes, subscribe to my podcast, and download the episodes. I've got 40 or so up there right now, more coming. This is number 465 in a ongoing series of daily talks about love, relationships, and more. Um, your homework is to consider these questions. What I said today, what I said in this talk, is consider for yourself where maybe you're off track, where you're on track, where you can change, what you can do differently. Be willing to look at yourself clearly, without bias, and see the truth about yourself. Is your history still running your life? Does that work for you? Because that's the other thing. If, history work, if it's working for you, great. If it's not working for you, do something about it. Give you some ideas, some suggestions, and I hope some inspiration and, pos and some, hopefully some um, a positive outlook. <laughs> I appreciate you being with me. Thanks for watching. Again, this is my earlier than usual broadcast at 4 p.m. I'll be back again at 5 p.m. tomorrow. My broadcasts are at 5 p.m. Pacific time usually. This weekend I had social plans and I have tonight, so I've got to get going. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.